Hello, this is Liana Bolden with Eternally Speaking Now. Our family a while back had visited my parents in Michigan. As we concluded our final evening there, the five of us sat to take communion together. My mom tore bits of bread from a loaf and my dad poured the juice. We gathered around the table as my husband led us in a time of silence and personal reflection. When Jesus died on the cross for us, his body was torn. His blood was poured out. His heart of love was revealed to all mankind. In the quiet moments that followed during that time of silence and reflection, I was reminded of a sin that had crept in that morning. Moved to tears, I confessed to Jesus that I had been doubting his goodness. <laughs> Not only that, I had to confess that I had been questioning the truth of his word towards me. Quite frankly, in a moment of emotional desperation that very morning, I'd been tempted to wonder if he was even real. Oh, my head knew the truth, but my heart doubted. As I prayed about this in my mind, the word betray pierced my heart. Yes, to a degree, I had betrayed my Lord. I knew better than to entertain such thoughts of doubt towards Jesus, but I also knew if left unconfessed, they'd keep me in some way separated from him. That's a dangerous, unhappy, and crippling place to be. Robin's voice interrupted my thoughts as he encouraged us then to take a piece of bread and consider the body of Christ. After doing so, I shut my eyes and listened to my husband's prayer. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for the remission of our sins, he concluded. I opened my eyes and looked down at the bread in my hand, and I was in awe of the Lord as I saw the gift that he had given me. After I had confessed my sins with a broken and contrite spirit, there in front of me, in my hand, was a piece of bread in the shape of a heart. The bread had literally been broken and had been in the shape of a heart. The truth about the bread of life, Jesus Christ, my Savior, completely overtook me as I stared at that sweet piece of bread in my hand. God is a good father. He cares and provides for us. His loving kindness toward us never ends. He forgives us even though we don't deserve it. And he loves us even when we are and his enemies. He never leaves us. He remains faithful to us even when we are unfaithful. These are all truths from scripture. And Romans 8 confirms, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If I doubt 1% of these truths or any of God's word, there is a grain or more of betrayal in me towards him. Oh no, my heart cried, looking upon that bread in my hand. Am I Judas? God's spirit spoke to mine. No, my dear. You're Peter. Suddenly, I was filled with some of the most love I've ever had for this great God and Savior who first loved me. What kindness, what goodness. You see, when Judas denied Christ, he was remorseful and he hung himself. But when Peter denied the Lord, he wept bitterly and was restored. Both men betray, betrayed or denied Christ, but there was a world of difference in their hearts and their reactions. Both men betrayed or denied Christ, but there was a world of difference in their hearts and their reactions. Peter was sorry. And his sorrow led to repentance, which led to salvation. Judas was sorry, but it was a worldly sorrow, and it concluded in his death. Peter knew the love of Jesus, and Judas did not. The kindness, the goodness, the love of God is what led Peter out of lies and into truth. God's love melted Peter's heart, and Peter returned to him. So here's our challenge. 
Because we're human, it seems inevitable that to some degree we will experience betrayal in our hearts. And I'm not speaking here of, of falling away from the faith, but instead to that inkling of doubt or even sometimes mockery towards what God says in his word. I'm referring to the little thoughts that'll sneak up and into us. What makes the difference isn't whether this happens or not in your heart, but how you react to it when it does. Will you respond like Judas or will you respond like Peter? He is giving you his heart of love. Will your hand reach out and receive him? The Lord knew Peter would deny him. You know, before it happened, he said in Luke 22, 31 to 32, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Jesus has prayed for you. Your faith shall not fail. You will return to him. Then go, strengthen your sisters and brothers in Christ. Regardless of how long we've walked with the Lord, whether we know him intimately yet or not, areas of our heart can fall blind to God's love for us. God is love and his love never fails. May that drive us to receive him with open hands and hearts. Amen.